Mac Maths, Mac Maths, let's do some maths today. Statistics. Okay, so this is chapter four. Uh, let's, so we're calling it lesson four because it's in chapter four and it's uh, about sort of scatter graphs. Um, so we're looking at correlation and that's the name of the chapter. Um, but we're also going to really be looking at this here, regression. Um, actually, it doesn't obviously can't explain it in the in the um, textbook how to work it out on a calculator. So I'm going to show you how to work it out on a calculator. And you do need to. Uh, this is the uh, your line of regression. You do need to know that um, because you you may get asked to do that on the exam. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about um, scatter graphs and correlation first. So I'm going to waffle a little bit. I'm just going to talk about GCSE here, what we know from GCSE. Um, and I want to start with GCSE because actually at A level, um, it just grows up a little bit. You have to, it's asking you that really it's asking you to think a little bit more um, about correlation and your lines of best fit. So it just sort of ups it really. So what do we know from GCSE? Well, you know from GCSE, you know, you're given two... Um, variables and you know what correlation means okay you plot the two variables one against the other and they either come out like that and it, you say it's positive correlation because it's going up or it comes out like that and you say it's sort of negative correlation because it's going down or the points are just all over the, the place aren't they and so you say that there's no correlation um, and you know that if they are very in a nice sort of tight band, you you call it strong positive correlation, um, or you could get weak positive sort of correlation, and so on. Okay, so you know that from sort of GCSE. At GCSE, a typical question um, would be the ones that you sort of see is um, like the age um, of a of a tree. Uh, okay, and you'd have the height of a tree, so age versus height for a tr for a particular type of tree, and you'd have um, this sort of thing here. Uh, you'd plot a scatter graph, wouldn't you? And then in the exam, it would say, you know, a tree, uh, a tree is six years old. You know, how high do you think it would be? Okay, so you would go, oh, so you'd look at six on your thing. You'd draw your line of best fitting, wouldn't you? Let's do that in a different colour. You've all done this on the exam. You draw your line of best fit in, you get a mark for a decent line of best fit, and then you'd go up from your line of best fit till you reached the line and go across, okay, and you'd read off the height of the tree. And it might say in the question, another tree has a height of um, four meters, you know, how old, old is it? And you'd again put your ruler on, go along, go down, and you'd read off an estimate for the age okay and that's uh, GCSE sometimes you'd get it would tell you that a tree is eight years old and a height of you know two meters or something like that and when you plot that okay you get a point that we is an anomaly it doesn't fit this data and it would say make you know make a comment about that and you'd say well it's a different sort of tree than this one. This is, might be all elm trees, and this might be a different sort of tree, something like that, a slow-growing tree. Okay, um, and that's GCSE, and that's what you're expected to do at GCSE. But at A level, um, you're asked to think a little bit more about um, the variables that you use, um, and the regression here is getting a more accurate line of best fit rather than just sticking your ruler on and doing one by eye. So that's uh, where we have to move to and that's what I'm going to talk you through now. Okay, first of all, I want to talk you through um, where you put and where you plot the variables. Um, it's important where you plot them on the X and which one you put on X and which one you put on Y. So for instance here, you can see that I did age and height of the tree. It would not be appropriate to do it the other way around in this case. And that's because we call often call this one, the X one, the independent. 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 Independent variable. That means that the tree, whatever happens, is getting older, isn't it? So 
the height is is um this one is independent it's just it's sort of age is going up and this one is the dependent one variable because the height is dependent on the age okay the tree isn't getting older because it's getting taller the tree is getting taller because it's getting older okay so this is the leading um variable and it's causing this one to happen it's causing the height to increase okay not the other way around so you need to know that about the independent variable and the dependent variable okay and you heard me use this word cause okay so this is this height of the tree dependent on its age um, is called a causal relationship one is causing the other okay so but be very careful about that just because there's correlation just because there's a relationship it does not mean that it's a causal relationship in this case it is you know this is being caused by the tree getting older and that's a causal relationship but you can't always say that one is a causal relationship you know every time you get correlation it does not mean it's a a causal relationship so for instance a, 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 an example of that I'm trying to think of examples of that um, and again just going back to very sort of basic GCSE sort of examples might be you know they take um, 10 students and they take their maths scores and their art scores and they plot their percentage that they got on their art exam and the percentage that they got on their maths exam and they might do the maths here and their art here okay and when they plot them they find this happens okay and it's actually sort of positive correlation for the sort of the 10 okay um now uh, you wouldn't say that people are good at art because they're good at maths is that being good at maths is not causing them to be good at art just because they're good with numbers it's not it's not a skill that's then leading them to be good at painting or coloring in or whatever it is they do in art i don't know make in our school make big biscuits silly really um a paper mache ridiculous but uh, anyway so that's um you know causing uh, it's there's not a causal relationship here it may be here that, i mean you could do it all the other way around art is not causing them to be good at maths and maths is not causing them to be you know why would you get a correlation here and you might have to start thinking about other reasons for relationships um, and and um, you know that's where A level is, is sort of different, you know, than than GCSE. It is asking for more interpretation, you know, of um, the you know the results and the, um, the 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 correlation that you get. And and one here, it might be the relationship might be that the fact that actually these ones here are the more that you know the the cleverer students than the more studious students. Okay, the top set of students, because actually students, when they're good at, you know, a particular topic, they're usually good at all of the topics. When we get GCSE results in, there's not, a, you know, you take any particular student, they get r relatively similar results, you know, across the board. A student who gets grade A's gets grade A's and grade B's, you know, and C's. They don't get grades A's and grade F's and G's. OK, a student who gets F's and G's or, you know, these ones and twos as they are now, tends to get ones and twos across in all of their subjects. Um, so that's, you know, you could put any two subjects together and it would probably sort of look like this. OK, so that's the first thing that you have to um, uh, be aware of about causal, you know, what causes the causal. So think of those words independent, I'll write them down, independent independent here he goes again independent variable and dependent so i want you to think about those okay also causal relationships not always just because they have correlation okay does not mean um they are causal and art math shows this the other thing is that i want to talk about as well that is oh uh, and of course you may get asked to describe the correlation where you just say positive correlation or strong positive correlation if you're asked to interpret it you say 
students who are good at maths tend to be good at art or students who are good at art tend to be good at maths okay so that is um, you know that's interpreting the the correlation rather than just stating what the correlation is okay um, another one is um, let's have a look at interpolation And what we did before was interpolation when we looked at the height let's go back to our tree because this is a good one and we'll go age and we'll go height here okay now let's just say we plot age against height and we get that okay and you draw your line of best fit there's our line of best fit okay so two things here at a level you've got to also sort of think about is first of all what we did before is when we took an age and read off a height that is called interpolation okay so when we use our data and our line of best fit um, to to read off from one variable to another that's called interpolation and it's the same as you know what we called interpolation before when we know it's within a particular group in a uh, in a table and we are or we're reading off that cumulative frequency graph okay we're going up to the data and we're reading across okay that's interpolation within the range of the data so or finding the median when you know it's in a particular group that is interpolation okay so it's within the bounds of the data and that's okay now you can of course say well, hang on what happens if a a tree is 10 years old, so 10 might be up here. Well, you could still find that out by extending your line of best fit on and saying, right, there we go. It would be that high in 10 years if your data only went up to, say, seven years. OK, now, if you do that, that is not called interpolation. That's called extrapolation 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 okay because you are extrapolating you're saying if it carried on this is what would happen and you've got to be very careful about extrapolation um, and you can probably guess why that actually once you go outside of your data range once you go outside of it e either way before or after uh, extrapolation is it becomes very very tricky imagine this was not trees but people or you know let's, let's stick with trees it's a certain type of tree these this type of tree might only reach a certain height it might not just keep growing and growing and growing and actually trees don't do they you know if it, they live to be two or three hundred years they're not two or three hundred meters high it's silly you know that at some point they start growing to a particular you know and stay at a particular height OK, so this might tail off, this data might tail off and an extrapolation might then not be very good. If this was age and height of, of people, yeah, as someone grows up to about sort of 18 years, you'd get something like this and you can do a line of best fit. But people are not getting taller through their 40s, 50s, 60s. So extrapolation wouldn't work. Well, it would work, but it wouldn't give you an accurate figure, would it? So you have to be very careful about extrapolation. Um, companies do it when they're trying to borrow money from a bank um, and they say look at how much you know money we've made you know in the last year since starting our business um, so they're starting and this is in years or whatever and they're trying to get expand and they go oh, this is our sales sorts of figures you know going up each year and if you know, so they're saying in 20 years time, if you extrapolate in 20 years time, we're going to be earning this much. And it's very dangerous, isn't it? They could use that as evidence to say this is what we're going to book. It's not necessarily, you know, their business isn't necessarily going to keep on going up. It might sort of plateau, might it? So extrapolation is, is dangerous. Interpolation is absolutely fine because it's within the data range. OK. So I've waffled and waffled and waffled, and it's just the basics, but sort of stepping up and describing and knowing some of the terms about causal relationships and not every correlation 
you know, is you know, is is causal. Of course, all the ones I've given have cut, you know, have been positive, haven't they? Positive correlation. Um, negative correlations are harder to find, aren't they? You know, I saw once on GCSE quite a morbid one, and it was sort of death rates within an uh, on a continent. I can't remember where it, which the continent was, an Asian continent or an African continent, and it was saying in in areas that were sparsely populated. Um, there was an increase um, in the, the more doctors there were in an area uh, the, and it had like the death rate, that's right, it had the death rate and the number of doctors in an area per, you know, per kilometre square and the higher the doctors the lower the death rates, the less doctors the higher the death rate. So that's a, a pretty morbid example of, um, uh, of negative correlation and so on. OK. Um, anyway, so I'm not going to do anything from exercise um, 4A because it's just getting you to um, plot scatter graphs and it gives you tables, takes time and asking you to, you know, think about, you know, outliers and, um, and, and comment on them and comment on whether it's strong correlation or weak correlation and whether it's a causal effect or not and so on. And you can read the, the answers in the back for those. But I am going to talk about regression. So what is regression then? So regression is just adding a little bit more accuracy, well, a lot more accuracy to it. Okay, and there's a... Let me talk about regression. If we're going to make... in use interpolation or extrapolation and make predictions from some data that we've got. We want those predictions to be as accurate as possible. Okay. And to be as accurate as possible means a really good line of best fit. Now at GCSE, you just asked to stick your ruler on. Okay. It might, you know, there's a lot of things we can do to improve it. We can find the average, the mean of the x values and the mean of the x, the y values and plot those as a point in the middle and then pivot our line of best fit around it. OK, so that's one thing we can do, perhaps to improve the line of best fit. But there is something at, at A level called a regression line. And a regression, a regression line is effectively just y equals mx plus c. OK, y equals mx plus c. And but it's not written in that form. The C is written first, so it's written as Y equals A plus B X. But you can see it's the same thing. OK, so let's stick with this version. And when you see it written like that or referred to as Y equals A plus B X, you can see you can see it's a linear line, but you know it's re referring to a regression line. And what a regression line does is it takes there's a formula that you do not need to use or learn. I learned it when I was at school, but you do not, you're not given it in the book, so you're not asked to learn. But what it does is it draws then, a, it gives you a y equals mx plus c, okay? And what it does is it minimizes for the x variable the distance between all of the points vertically and the, in fact, it's actually the squares of the. Um, distances of all of the points from the line. So it draws a line that has the minimum okay, amount of distance from all of the points from the actual line vertically. And that allows you to do some things and not others. It allows you to make predictions going that way and predicting from X, putting X values in and predicting Y. It does not allow you, and you must never go the other way. If you go the other way to make predictions, then you have to find a new regression equation because the one going the other way would be find the shortest. It would be a slightly different line that would be the dis the vertical distances or the horizontal distances from the y. In other words, distance from that point to this line here and that point to this line and so on. So it would change slightly. So if you're giving it to this, you can only go one way. Put in X to find Y. You can't go the other way around. 
okay? You can't rearrange that and use it the other way around. You have to find the other regression line going the other way and it would be slightly different than this, okay? So just be aware of that. You must only use it one way around, all right? If you are, going, if they're asking you to make predictions on the exam, we're going to do that in a minute, they will give you the regression formula. In other words, the y equals mx plus c with the a and the b in it. Now, as you know from y equals mx plus c, okay, the b is the gradient of the line. Okay, so if that's a positive number, it has a positive slope. And if it's got a positive slope, then it's positive correlation. So if B is positive, it's a positive correlation. If B is negative, it's negative correlation. B is the gradient. And A, of course, is you need that reference point for it to come from. That's where it crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept, isn't it? Okay. Now, sometimes you can't use that as a point, you know, once you've drawn your regression line, if you're asked to draw it, because it would be extrapolation and it sometimes would not make any sense okay um to, to to use that in terms of the context of the question all right so but anyway so that is the y intercept okay it would represent naught years for our tree wouldn't it and if it was our tree you would expect it to be here wouldn't surely it's, it's got no height after no years okay all right so let's have a look at that. So we're just going to do one question on this and I'm actually going to show you how to do it on the calculator as well. Now the reason I'm going to show you how to do it on your calculator is because at the end of the chapter it refers to the, um, the database that it gives you and it does ask you to calculate your own line of regression. Now the only way you can do it is on your cal if you've got a table of results and you know how to put them put them into your calculator to get your values of A and B and I'm going to show you that. Okay. So the only one I'm going to do is a simple one from 4B, but they're all simple really. Okay, so there's exercise 4B, question two. I know I've waffled. Okay. And I'm going to go through that question with you very quickly. And uh, and then you can do the rest yourself, okay, and show you how to put it into a calculator. Okay, so we're going to just move that across there. And it says the relationship between coats of paint and the weather resistance was tested in a laboratory. So they put on one coat of paint and they, they tested it and said it had 4.4 years of protection. Okay, two coats of paint had 5.9 years of uh, protection. And then they... In the exercise, it refers to Helen is doing this research. Ten coats means. Let's just put that there. Okay. So, okay, here we go. First of all, um, it tells you to draw a scatter graph. Okay, so you can see I plotted one. You can see I made a mistake. I put that cross in the wrong year there. I tried to rub it out. My rubber was gone all hard, so it just smeared it. It didn't actually rub it out. So I've put some liquid paper on there and uh, some Tipex to do it. And you can see it's a very strong positive correlation, isn't it? If we were asked to um, comment on that, you'd say strong positive correlation. Now, as promised in the book, you're not asked to work out a regression line. So, but it gives you the equation of the regression line. Y equals 2.93 plus 1.45x. If I was to plot that, now it does on some of the questions ask you to plot the regression line. It doesn't on this one, but I'm going to. So 2.93, 2.93, well that's 2.9 there, so it's about there. Okay, that's my 2.93 point. Okay, the y-intercept on here. And a, a gradient of 1.45. So that means for every one along, it's going up 0.45. So... Um, it's sorry, it's going up 1.45, so one and almost one and a half years. So it's going up that is one year, and half a year is about sort of there, so just before that, about there, so almost where that crop first crosses. And that gives me two points. And if I draw my line, the best fit through there, okay, you can see. 
that not done dead accurately because I've only done it through one point. I should have gone one up 1.45, one along up 1.45. But there's my regression line using that formula. Okay, so that's the question. It doesn't ask me to plot that, but it, Helen, she's a bit daft, Helen, she's done this research. She says, says that from a gradient of 1.45, 10 coats would be 14.5 years protection. Comment on this. Well, you can see what Helen has done. She's just put 10 in there for X, and that would give you 14.45. But silly Helen, she hasn't added on the 2.93. Okay, so that's the first thing that's wrong with it, that she's forgot to add on the 2.93. And what else is wrong with what she's done? Well, what Helen is doing is doing this extrapolation, and she's done the first five years, you know, 10 years on. Okay, it might give you a value, but we don't know. It's going a, a lot further. You're okay to extrapolate, probably, aren't you? Just past the range, you know, round about here, six years. But after that, you can't trust data by extrapolation okay so that's regression so look for those they'll give you the value of a and b and i'm just going to finish now by showing you it on the calculator okay and the reason that i chose this one is because there wasn't a lot of points all right so here we go so if you go to uh hang on a minute so let's just switch it off off right let's switch it on again and menu set up let's go back to one okay right i've been have been on this and i've um set up there we go okay so here we go you got that so set up so you want to go to the statistics which is six so you press shift and set up and you go to six and you can see here, if you go down to number two, y equals a plus bx. Can you see that? That's your regression. So you want to press two. Straight away now, it gives you, I don't know what the frequency is there for. I have not done that yet. So, But all of the ones that you're going to get is going to have an x variable and a y variable. So we put them in just like we do with the others. And here's one to five for the x variable. So I'm going to go one equals two equals three equals four equals five equals. So I'll put those in. And then I'm going to move it up back to and put for one, we've got 4.4. So I'm going to put 4.4 equals 5.9 equals 7.1 equals 8.8 .8 equals and 10.2 equals. So I've put them up, those all in. Okay. And option. So you then click on, I've done all that, put, click on the option. And you can see there, number four, we give away regression calculation. That's the one we want, isn't it? We want the regression calculation. So we press number four, and it gives me A and B. Can you see that? I don't know what R is. I don't care. Uh, it gives me A and B, and if you look, A is 2.93, and B is 1.45, which is what it gave you in the book. So they will always give you those. They're not, you know, they're not asking you to calculate it manually, but you do need to be able to stick it into your calculator to get it. Okay, all right, and that is regression. Remember what regression is. So it's just a posh line of best fit in the form of y equals a plus bx. OK, the A is the y-intercept, so if it was years, it'd be naught years, and so on. OK, and B is the gradient of your line. All right, so think about that. Think about interpolation, good. Extrapolation, not so good. Try to avoid it, OK, outside of the range of data. Causal effect, you know, so there may be a causal relationship. There may not be. Just because there's correlation does not mean it's causing it. Remember our... Math scores are not causing us to be good at art, okay? But our our age is causing us to grow taller up to a certain age and so on, okay? I hope that's okay. Um, you can do all of those. They are, it is fairly straightforward, that chapter. Um, and But you do have to get better about thinking of the context of the correlation and making common sense um making common sense judgments about 
uh, about things and I you know had to read some of the answers in the back and didn't quite see where they were getting at okay so that is chapter four all done in one lesson one boring lesson okay